Hey, this is Jennifer McGuire with Two Peas in a Bucket.com, and today I'm going to show you some more fun things you can do with Distress Crackle Paint from Ranger. Uh, we're going to do lots of stamping with the Distress Paint. So, here are some samples that we're going to do. There's several different things here, and I'm going to walk you through each one. First of all, I'm going to show you how you can stamp an image and then paint it in with the Distress Crackle Paint. So, here's a card I did, and actually, that tree has the design in it but I painted over it and just gave it a totally different look. So here's the stamp, it's from Hero Arts and it's got cupcakes in the tree which I've used this with many different things before including flowers and things you can just cover up the cupcakes and get a totally different look. This is a black ink from uh, Ranger. It's their Adirondack black which is just a great basic black. I like that and the memories black that Hero Arts has. I'm just stamping this on some paper now this is the Distress Crackle Paint. This is the peeled paint color. I love this. This is a great green color and I'm just putting a big glob of it right in the, into the center. You can, this is about the consistency that I like my Distress Crackle Paint to be. Um, if you want it a little bit more runny, I guess, you can squirt in a little bit of water. So I'm just taking an old little tipped paintbrush and I'm working the paint up against the edges of the stamped image. Now I like to leave a little bit of space around it so you can see that in there, that's okay. And now I'm flicking it from the bottom and this helps to make the paint level out. It'll level out usually on its own, but you can flick it from the bottom to make it level out more. Now I'm gonna let that green paint dry on its own so that it cracks nicely. And here's a brushed corduroy brown paint and I'm using a thin paintbrush to paint into this tiny area of the tree trunk. So you can see it's easy to do. Now I kind of colored outside of the line. I'm not really worried about that. I can always fix that later. And here I'm going to make some grass with the same peeled paint from before. So I'm just using um, an extra old thin tipped paintbrush for this. Now I'm taking an old green marker. I like to use an older marker or steal one from my kids because I don't want the dis the crackle in the paint to mess up the tip of my paint of my brush. But you can use any kind. Um, just make sure it's not permanent because we want to color over it like this so that the paint or the marker seeps into the cracks and makes the crack stand out even more. Now I'm going to go in and wipe it with a wet paper towel and remove the marker from on top of the paint and so it'll be left just around the paint and on the cracks. So you can see how I filled in that space that wasn't filled with paint on the edges of the stamped image. And now in the places where I painted over the black stamped image, I'm just filling it in with a black pen. Now I wanted to have like a soft blue sky, so I'm just using my inking tool from Ranger, and this is Broken China Distress Ink, and I'm just working it gently around the image. Now if I get any blue on the tree, I can just wipe that off the paint, it's no problem. And I'm just going to put a soft layer of blue over this. Now, you can see I'm kind of wiping off some of the ink before I put it onto this because I don't want it to be too dark. So it makes a nice soft sky. And here's the final result. And I added some pearls to the tree just to soften it up. Now you see that um, greeting there, always a friend to me. That originally started out as a longer greeting. And so I'm going to show you how I cut my clear stamps up to get a different look. So I've got this long greeting, but I wanted it to be oriented differently and fit in this little space. So I'm just gonna actually cut through the plastic in between the words, not the plastic, through the stamp in between the words, and I can just orient it however I want here on my card. Now this is something I only recommend doing with high quality rubber stamps like Hero Arts or other made in the USA clear stamps. So there I've transferred right onto my acrylic mount and I'm ready to go. Also I wanted to show you, this is a Hero Arts shadow ink. It's just a soft color. And I like it because they match, they're like a soft version of some of the Distress Ink colors. So that, that pool um, shadow ink is like a light broken um, china ink. So it's nice to use for backgrounds. And I used the soft blossom for the background on this card. Just a nice soft color to use. And here's another technique. Um, this is stamping on top of crackle paint. And I did that for the title on this card. It gives you a very distressed look, but that's kind of what we're going for with this. So I took a chipboard circle and I just painted it with scattered straw distress um, crackle paint and I let it crack and dry on its own. And now I'm taking 
the vintage photo distress ink and working it over this and I'm working it in real good because I want it to get into the cracks and just add to the distress feel of it and once I'm done I'm just gonna spritz with my mini mister some water on a paper towel and buff it all off and you can see it gives it more of a weathered look it's really neat now I'm gonna stamp this I am using a permanent ink you can use Rangers archival black ink or you can use stays on ink from Sukuneko. I like the Ranger one um, a bit better. Now, if you, you're going to get places where the, it doesn't fill in completely, just use a black permanent pen to fill that in. Next, I thought I'd show you this new delicious uh, six by six paper pad from Basic Gray. It's got all these great papers that are perfect for card making because they're on a smaller scale. And there's 36 sheets in this, and even in the back are some distressed papers. Um, solid, more solid color papers that are great for these type of cards that we're doing. I like these stripes because you can cut slits, little strips out of it. Now I'm going to take this um, scallop border set from Hero Arts. This is one of my favorite borders. And when you want to make sure a uh, stamp is mounted straight, you just drop it down onto plain paper and then push the mount onto it and then you can be sure it's straight. Now this is Adirondack um, ink from Ranger. These are my favorite just colored inks. Um, they can stack together nicely, they close real nicely, and they come in three shades of the same kind of color. So this is a citrus and there's a lighter green and a darker green too. So I use this just for my basic stamping. So I'm going to cut this scallop out and I'm going to add it to the edge of a card. So I made this note card from Hero Arts a little narrower so that that scallop could hang off the edge. So you can see I'm gluing it so the scallop hangs right off the edge and I just cut off the extra. Just something different to do. Next I'm going to take the scattered straw distress ink which matches the paint that I used for this, car, for this circle here and I'm going to stamp it on the background using, this is the dot flourish stamp um, set from Hero Arts. I love this set because it just can add soft backgrounds um, to kind of enhance a, a card. Now it also comes with these little clear pieces here, these little clear stamps that you can go in and fill in in little places so that you can make your background exactly how you want it. It's fun to have those options. So here's the final result and you can see all the Hero Arts Basic Gray and Ranger working together. They all seem to fit real nice. And I also stamped this butterfly here with the black ink on some distress paint. And so I thought I'd show you that too. It's the same thing. I'm using this archival black ink from Ranger. And I'm just going to ink it up really good and press firmly onto that dried crackle paint there that I have um, already painted onto this paper. So I'm going to stamp that real firmly. And I can always go black, back with a permanent pen and fill in the areas that didn't get um, completely stamped. And now I can just cut carefully around the edge and have a cutout stamped image too. You can also emboss on crackle paint. So if you look here, I have stamped and white heat embossed onto this crackle paint. Now it gives a very cracked look, um, very distressed look. You could always go back and fill in the areas with a white, um, with a white pen, but I kind of like to leave it. Uh, that's kind of the fun of this type of technique. So I'm just going to, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera there. I'm just going to stamp with some embossing ink. I'm using my big embossy. And this is my white embossing powder. So I'm going to take up a scoop and shake it on, and then I'll heat it up. Now some of the white powder can get in the cracks. I just let it go. It's part of the look here. So I'm just heating it up, and you'll see it melts quite nicely. And then you can always go back with an embossing pen and fill in those areas and then shake on some more powder, but I like to leave it. So here are the two stamped butterflies. So I hope you have some more ideas with the Distress Crackle Paint. Be sure to visit Two Peas in a Bucket for more information. Thanks for watching.